I represent the International Trade Center, which is an organization that deals with the capacity building associated with international trade. And our primary objective here is to amplify the voice of small businesses. We need to look at what the small businesses need to make the adjustment. One of the greatest challenges is not so much the, the fact that they don't want to. It is that 70% of them have acknowledged that they know they need to, but less than 40%, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, say that they can't. And so we have to be able to bridge that gap. And how do we help them do that? In several ways, what we do, for example, is we work with them on capacity building and especially in agriculture. Yesterday, they had the decision on, on the food security and, and that was a very important decision because it looks at the fact that agriculture is one of the greatest contributors to climate change and deforestation. So how do we address that? We work, for example, I'll give you an example from Ghana. Ghana, as you know, is the second largest exporter of cocoa in the world. They have 3.5 million farmers involved in cocoa, which is huge. And as a result of that, they have engaged in some deforestation over the years. And as a result, they've also had lower, climb, lower yields of, of cocoa. So what we did is we worked in a project which we call Sankofa. And we've been working with a, a group of 100,000 farmers in what is the biggest cocoa union, as well as the Cocoa Development Board in, in Ghana. And through that project, we have worked on uh, in, in helping them with climate smart agriculture, multi-cropping, wastewater management, energy efficiency, and so on. As a result of that, we have been able to reforest 400 hectares, 400 hectares. We have also been able to sequester 70, 75,000 tons of CO2, putting it back in the atmosphere. We've also been able to enable them to export 8.5 million in terms of increased exports for cocoa, and they've gotten fair trade um, surplus of 2.5 million. So it really makes a difference, the fact that they have not only been able to help save the climate and, and reforest, but they've also been able to increase their income. And so it's a win-win for everybody. The other thing that we've been looking at in terms of, you know, how do we work on, on the process of enabling SMEs to do the climate change? Access to finance. It's a huge issue. And one of the biggest challenges with access to finance is that only 1.7% of small farmers across the world get access to any of the climate finance. 1.7% of that finance. And then less than 2% go to the 10 countries that are most affected by climate change. It's a problem. <laughs> and only 3% go to LDCs across the board. So we're talking about you know, very low um, amount of money. What we do is we try to then begin to work with banks, work with the companies to help them de-risk so that they are less risky for banks to invest in. We work with um, in impact investors. We work with funds, guarantee. We just signed with the... Um, uh, Green Climate Fund yesterday, a letter of intent to work together to enable the, us to harness uh, for the small businesses. So that's why we're here, in short. <laughs> well, loss and damage, the, the commitment, I'm really happy that they've reached an agreement because I know it was really tentative and I have a friend who's been involved in the negotiations who actually was one of the architects of the Bridgetown Initiative from Barbados. And the fact that we've been able to, to secure a deal is a good thing. A hundred million pledge is also good. But at the end of the day, we're talking a hundred billion per year that's needed, one. Two, despite the fact that we will have that money and that loss and damage fund established, the issue of being able to access that fund is the bigger challenge. And for many developing countries, that continues to be the challenge across the board. And the level of indebtedness, the level of capacity, um, the level of, of you know, uh, collateral that they need to provide, all of this adds up to, enable, to, to not enabling them to access the fund. So we have to work on the capacity issues. You know, how do we build their capacity to access these funds? How do we build their capacity to implement once they have access to these funds? How do we ensure the M&E you know, the monitoring evaluation to ensure that these funds are used properly. And then how do we evaluate 
the impact. So it's a, you know, it's a range of things that have to be done that are more than just about money. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's the ability to do with the money what you need to do so that you can have long-term change. If I had a final message, it would be about the just transition. The concept of justice must be that all at the end of the day will be equal. But it must also accept that all do not start from the same place. And therefore, there will need to be differential treatment and engagement and, and policies that address that inequality. At the end of the day, the, the objective is to leave no one behind. But to, in, to be able to leave no one behind, you have to put in place measures that are going to level that playing field and allow everybody to benefit from the change and, and the new climate um, reality.